This is Chris at HandfulOfTranquility.com. I chose to remake the string cheese video. The last one was a little bit lacking in the audiovisual department. I hope this one's a little bit more concise and looks and sounds better as well. Alright, let's get to it. We start off with uh, four cups of water and one to two tablespoons of salt, depending on how salty you like your string cheese and also depending on how salty the cheese is to begin with. I work with this uh, mozzarella cheese that I get from Sam's. I think I pay 11 and a half bucks for five pounds, so a little over two bucks a pound. It's pretty affordable that way. You want your water hot, but not boiling. If you stick your finger in it, it should be pretty hot if you just have it in there for a, spec a second or so. Your water should be hot, but not boiling. If you have your hand over it, you should feel a little bit of steam coming off. If you dip your finger in there for a second, it should be pretty warm to your finger. So you just pretty much toss in your cheese. Ratios don't really matter. And then stir it around. The hotter your water, the faster it'll melt. But if you have it too hot, it can separate. So we're just going to stir it until all the uh, individual curds kind of separate out a little bit after they get soft. So we'll go ahead and turn it up and then come back when it's all kind of melted. For those that like temperatures and exact measurements, this water is about 150 degrees or so. The hotter you get the cheese, the easier it will be to stretch, and the more you can stretch it before you have to re-soften it, uh, the harder it is to actually get out of the pot because it tends to flake apart. So I'm going to get this out and we'll start stretching it. Alright, I really do love these uh, insulated silicon oven mitts. They really make it a lot easier to get stuff out and deal with hot liquids. So now we just start stretching. The hotter your cheese is, the more you can stretch it before you'll have to kind of toss it back in the uh, water to stretch more. But uh, the amount you stretch it is how stringy your cheese will end up. If you just kind of stop right now, it'll be kind of stringy, kind of like some of the lower quality stringy cheese you can get at the store. And the more you stretch it, the stringier it'll be. So just keep stretching and folding. That's it. That's all there is to making string cheese. Now we kind of work it into a uh, log shape and it, you can wrap it up tightly in parchment paper or wax paper. I definitely prefer parchment paper because there's still some residual moisture in here and wax paper will just kind of get soggy. But shape it like a log, rack, wrap it up tightly and stick it in the fridge. Freezer if you want your string cheese done a little bit quicker. So as it's cool, we'll try ripping it open. All right, let's take a piece of the string cheese, break it off, and see how it did. Well, that's, that's beautiful. Much better than store-bought, or a lot of the store-bought. It strings very nicely. So however many strings, or how many, however many folds I did there is about what you need.